Hey guys, it's Angie, also known as The Light. Welcome to my channel. Please like, subscribe, and if you'd like to make a donation to me, my PayPal information will always be in my description box or my comment section. Um, thank you to those who donated to me recently. I emailed those who donated to me, so I'm emailing your... Um, email address that is connected to your PayPal account so please check that email and uh, whenever you donate to me uh, I'm going to email you and ask you do you have any questions or a topic idea you would like me to do in the video and I will respond to it in a video um, for you um, no donation is too small or too large and I'm so so grateful for those of you who already have donated to me, I appreciate it. If you want me to continue this channel, you want me to be motivated, donate to me. And I will continue to make more videos. Okay, so before I get started on the topic today, I just want to adjust something. I know as my channel is growing, I'm noticing as my channel is growing, I'm getting more and more negative comments. And that comes with YouTube or any social media outlet um and i expect that and that's fine and i know that there, there's only probably two individuals who would be on my um my channel one it'll probably be a narcissist themselves or two somebody who has been narcissistically abused and i expect to have mentally ill people coming on my channel trolling and saying negative comments but if you don't have a mental illness I'm just going to address these issues. My channel is about self-love, beauty, and being narcissistic free. And um, my channel is not a vlog for fashion, for beauty, or anything like that. So when you're commenting in my comment section, I'm going to need you to keep your comments on narcissism, okay? I have thick eyebrows, get used to them, sometimes I put makeup on them to make them pop when I do my makeup. If you do not like my thick eyebrows, as you can see there's no makeup on them today and I have very very thick eyebrows and, that's, and they look tame because I actually wax them. If big eyebrows offend you, if you think big eyebrows are ugly or, or eyebrows with makeup on them, you can just click the unsubscribe button and go to the other thousands and thousands of narcissistic um channels you do not have to watch my videos um if you have a problem with big women you don't have to watch my videos if um you don't like my fashion if you feel that i'm showing too much cleavage if cleavage offends you if you think big women shouldn't show cleavage you can unsubscribe to my channel. I get the weirdest comments about my looks, about my eyebrows. Yes, they are real. You know, it's really strange to me because a lot of, you know, our Arabic women, Indian women, they're very hairy like myself or have big eyebrows and it's looked upon as so beautiful. But why is it because it's on a, a, a black woman? It, it's weird to you. I, I don't know what the heck it is. I do not need fashion advice. <laughs> I don't need beauty advice. I know that I dress beautifully. This was my mother. She was a model. Okay. Uh, yes, I, I grew up in a narcissistic home, but she dressed lovely. And she was a model. And my major when I was in college was fashion design. So I do not need beauty tips. And I went to beauty school as well. And I'm a licensed cosmetologist. I am not here to be critiqued on my looks. I'm here to give you information that will help you in life, to help you heal just as I did. Also, um, I ended up removing one of my videos because it was about a guy who I had um, like was seeing for a little bit. He was not my boyfriend. I was not intimate with this guy. And one of my narcissistic uh, ex-friends she has slept with him in the past. I know some of you probably remember that video. I deleted that video because um, I'm no longer going to even discuss my present 
life when it comes to sex or love or anything like that. All of my videos will be based on past experiences or if it is a present experience, it will be on a female friend or you know a narc that I recently cut off or something like that. Because a lot of times people like to take little pieces of your life and they think they know you. I have shared so much of myself and so much of my experiences with you that sometimes people feel, I get it, you feel connected to people over social media and you think you know their entire life story and that is not true. People on social media, even including myself, we only show you what we're willing to give to you because you know what, people have to save parts of themselves for themselves. So yes, I, it's awesome. Uh, the feedback that I get and the beautiful comments and I love them. I love the love. I I, I um I feel honored that God is using me to help people and y'all are helping me as well. Um but at the same time I like to keep some of my business to myself and it is a risk that I came onto YouTube to share you know, um, things that I had gone through in the past, and I'm going to continue, but there's some things I'm not going to lie, I want to cut the comment section off, because I just want y'all to get the message, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep the comment section open, because I know some of you like to reach out to me, and I'm sorry, I can't always read these long paragraphs, you know, of things that you are trying to comment at me, I'm not ignoring you, it's just that it could be draining at times, because I do have a personal life, I, I do, you know, work, and I do have friends, and I do have events, and I do have a life too, outside of YouTube, I try not to make YouTube my life, but a lot of times the comments do come to my cell phone, and it can um, become overwhelming at times. But yeah, if I see a negative comment and it's not, I don't mind people who want to argue me down based on narcissistic facts or want to argue me down, you know, just a, have a healthy debate on narcissism, that's cool. But if I see a comment about my looks, I see a comment talking about you need to be saved and all this religious stuff, I'm going to delete it. I'm going to report you and I'm going to, I'm going to block you, whatever I can do because that's not what's going to go on in my channel, okay? We're all here to share our story and help each other get through this so that we don't get tricked by narcissists, okay? Do I, do I still attract narcissistic men? Yes, I do, but I also, because I've healed, I attract awesome men. Even when um, I wasn't healed, I attract awesome men as well, okay? So... For those of you who are wondering, will I ever, will I, will I forever attract um, narcissistic men? This is how I feel. If you are a healer, I think that you're always going to attract darkness because that is that's their that is their duty to try to dim your light. <laughs> that is their duty. So yes, you all. I feel there's not going to be a time where you're just not going to attract the narcissist. It's up to you now that you're educated so that you'll be like, you know what, I could tell this person's a narcissist and I'm not even going to deal with them. I'm not going to be friends with them. I'm not going to date them. I'm not even going to try to save them. All right, so now that I got that out the way, um, I want to talk about how the narcissist um, competes with you. And... Um, you, you're not competing with anybody. I'm sure if you're an empath, a genuine person, you're not competing with anyone, okay? Um, you're just floating through life, minding your business, and then you come across this narcissist that sees who you, who you are because the narcissist is a demonic, demonically possessed person and their demon saw your light, <laughs> So when they saw you, they were like, ding, 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 jackpot. I gotta, I gotta dim this person. I have got to take them down. They are my competition. Now, this has happened to me a lot of times, especially with a lot of narcissistic females that I came across, um, automatically jealous of me and they have more than me. And like I said before in my other videos, 
in the past i never understood it i would be like wow they got more money than me they got more family than me they got they're married they got kids and they jealous of me i just i just didn't get it and i never saw it coming i get it now because you have to understand all that stuff doesn't matter if you have light if you have self-love if you um can block out negative comments from people and people see that that you're strong and they can't dull your light that's it they they are jealous of you they can see somebody who's a millionaire but you what you possess in you is is beyond the million dollars pretty much okay um so with 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 every video i do i always have this story and um also with the competition of from the narcissist um i feel like it kind of throws you into this mindset of like hmm let me let me tell you how i felt when i when not when narcissists were competing honestly i became really confused and um while they're competing with you they have a way of making you it's like they're competing with you but making you feel less than okay there you go so it's like when they'll say things to try to bring you down or they'll try to break your confidence but in actuality they're secretly competing with you that that's basically what's going on okay so i'm gonna give you uh, um just grabbing my water right now i'm gonna give you an example of when um, I had narcissists competing with me. First off, I was so blind to this woman because this narcissist um, used religion. <laughs> this is this was I, I this was my ex godmother. Okay, she was a narcissist, and um, she was. She grew up with my mother. They went to high school together, and the ex god, the ex, the ex godmother, um, has a daughter, and her daughter is my god sister. And I'm still in touch with the god sister, but I've completely gone no contact with the godmother. Okay, so anyway, um, through like growing up, I always noticed like this real subtle type of like nitpicking i don't think my mom noticed it i don't think so because she still had narcissistic friends up until she died um but i noticed that this woman the godmother um the narc godmother um was always in competition with my mom and i noticed it even more after my mom died my mom died when i was 23 and the godmother was there through the entire time that my mother was passing away like my mom trusted her she was there and it's sad to say i really think that the godmother kind of got off watching my mother die from cancer because you got to understand like in that narcissist's mind watching people be sick watching people die it makes them feel good it, it makes them feel like oh i'm better than this person and i think her whole life she always was in competition with my mom since high school since they've known each other um i always felt that the godmother would com compare her daughter to my to her daughter to me um my god sister and i are only a year apart so she's 35 i'm 34 and we, you know, grew up together, sleep over each other's houses, so, and our birthdays, we're both Leos, we're, we're a week apart. So our birthdays are, um, sometimes we would do birthday parties together, and um, one year, I said that I wanted to go to D DR, I wanted to go to Dominican Republic for my birthday, and I was telling, you know, the godmother this, I'm like, you know what, I want to go... I want to go to DR, and she was just like, why do you want to go to DR? You should go to Atlantic City. <laughs> For those of you who know what Atlantic City is, Atlantic City is like, it's in New Jersey, and it's a gambling area, and it has a beach, but Atlantic City is no comparison to Dominican Republic. 
it's basically like a bootleg Vegas, okay? It, it, it's like a poor Vegas. Um, so she just kept enforcing this, like, oh, no, no, no. You shouldn't go to Dominican Republic, and this is what the narcissist will do. They always want you to have less than. They don't want you to have the best of the best. Okay, um, they don't want you to have, um, you know, Christian Louis Vuitton. They want you to have Payless. They don't want you to have Gucci. They want you to have Walmart brand. Not that there's anything wrong with those brands, but you get what I'm saying. You're not good enough to have the best of the best. So, um, I think I ended up going to, yeah, I think I ended up going to Miami instead. Um, and... I asked her, you know, what is your daughter going to do, which was my god, which was my god sister, what is your daughter going to do for her birthday, and she was like, oh, I don't know, so, um, before I went to Miami, um, the god sister's birthday came a week before mine, and she said, the godmother said, oh, well, I booked my daughter a resort, you know, near the beach, and, um, you know, she has a whole, a whole house to herself off the beach because the godmother has a timeshare. So it's like, oh, okay, that's nice. You know, I'm not thinking anything like, oh, um, am I thinking, wow, she has a resort, you know, off the beach or whatever, excuse me, a beach house off the beach. And, um, I'm going to Miami. I'm not focused on what anyone's doing, and this is how crazy the narcissist is thinking, they're always doing crap to, like, compete with you, and you're not, you're not even catching up on, they've been doing this for years, and sometimes it just takes a long time for you to even catch up on it, uh, when I figured out she was a narcissist, when I thought back, like, oh, that was about, like, the girl had no plans at all for her birthday, but she went out of her way, because she was trying to outdo me, uh, because I was going to Miami, you know, for my birthday. But anyway, so, um, anytime, you know, her daughter was doing something, like if, like I, when I went, her daughter went to medical assistant school and then I went, and then her daughter would, you know, would, would get a promotion at work and she'll say, oh, my daughter got a promotion and what's going on with you? You know, oh, my daughter has a new boyfriend, what's going on with you? And it was just always a competition, and it, it's sad to say, like, her and I, my god sister and I, are completely different women. There is no comparison. We are completely different. Um, first of all, she got married really young. She has three children. I've never been married. I have no kids. Like, we live two totally different lives. There's absolutely no character competition or um, comparison there. We're just two different people. And through, it, everything was always good for her daughter, but I had to have less. You know, it was just like, oh, my daughter has this, 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 and that. But, oh, no, you shouldn't do that. And you should, it was just always her pushing me to accept less. And um, I got tired of that shit. I'm not going to lie. Like, it took me a long time to figure out she was a narcissist. I didn't know what narcissism was. I just knew that she always made me feel I was less than and always come, you know, comparing me to her daughter. Um, how that relationship ended was in 2016, I had surgery. I ain't going to tell you what it was on, but I had surgery and she never visited me in the hospital. She didn't visit me after I got out the hospital and that was the end. And that is something that narcissists would do. And, um... I went no contact on her ass because how can you say, oh, I'm like a second mother to you and I was in the hospital having my first major surgery ever in my life and I didn't get no water, I didn't get no flowers, I didn't get no visit when I got out the hospital, no food, no nothing. The narcissist does not give a damn. They, they portray this image and um, it's all false, okay? And you'll know that when you're in these horrific situations in your life, these times when you really, really need support. Keep in mind, 
I don't like most of my family is dead. I have no parent, my parents deceased. So it was really, really shocking that someone who would say, Oh, I'm like her daughter, um, wouldn't even come to the hospital, you know? So I got tired of being compared to her daughter where there is no comparison at all. And um her her true character was revealed and that was enough for me. And it's been since 2016 since I cut her ass off. Alright, another situation where the person was always competing with me. I met this girl. I used to work at a boutique. I used to run this boutique for someone, um, women's clothing. And I had two customers walk in. This was probably about like seven years ago. And I saw these two girls walk in. And they wanted to try on some clothing. So they tried on some clothing. They bought some items. And they asked me who did my hair. And I said, well, I did. I'm, I'm a hairstylist. So I exchanged information with them. And one of the girls, um, she was a plus size girl as well. And she said, well, I'm going to contact you because I'm going to need, you know, plus size clothing. And I'm going to need my hair done. And I quickly became her hairstylist and um she seemed cool she seemed cool she she was you know an african girl she seemed like she came from a very like rich in love type of family um it, her she said that her her mom was a nurse her dad was a doctor you know she gave me this impression that she had this very rich life you know overall financially and you know uh, morally and all of that so I began to um keep in touch with this girl and hang out with her I had no idea what narcissism was back then so don't come for me <laughs> and um I had a friend in DC and I used to go for the weekend to Washington DC just to hang out or whatever, to party, hang out with this particular friend. So the girl said, oh, do you want to hang out this weekend? The African girl goes, do you want to hang out this weekend? Let's call her, let's call this this African girl, let's call her, let's call her Amanda. So Amanda, um, I told Amanda, listen, I can't hang out with you this weekend. I'm going to Washington. I'm going to D.C., so she's like, you are? I've never been to D.C. Can I come with you? And I was like kind of like thrown back because at this time, I might have known Amanda for maybe like two or three months. I really did not know her like that. So I said to her, I said, um, I'm not really sure because I'm staying over my friend's house and she's married. I don't know if she's going to want a random strange woman that, you know, that she doesn't know, sleeping in her home with her husband there. Let me ask her and see how she feels. So I asked the other girl, and the girl I was going to go stay with, and she said, listen, if you think that she's not crazy, y'all are both welcome to stay at my house, no problem. So I let this girl, who I only knew for about two or three months, Amanda, come with me to D.C. for the weekend. We only stayed for two nights like Friday and Saturday and um it was a good ride we went to DC the friend in DC picked us up and um I don't think we went partying that night we went partying in the next night um but that morning when we got up early that morning at the time I was seven day Adventist went to church on Saturday and um I said to Amanda you know, can you get dressed because we're going to go to church? Amanda says, no, I'm not going to church with you. And I'm like, Amanda, like, I can't leave you in the house with her husband here. Like, you came on this trip with me? She's like, oh, I'm Catholic. I'm like, it doesn't matter if you're Catholic. If I was, if you invited me to, you know, to church with you, I would go. And I'm seven-day Adventist. And she was just like, no, I'm not going. So, to me, that was a big red flag. But at the time, I did not know what narcissism was. And I was just like, whoa. So, I asked, you know, my friend, was it okay if the girl can stay, you know, in the home? 
not, according to what I know, nothing ever happened between Amanda and my friends, you know, at the time, husband. But I thought it was very disrespectful that she declined to go to church. Even when I even, when I told her that we were going to go to church that Saturday morning. Anyway, we went on to go to church. We came back. Later on that night, we all decided to meet up with my friend that lived in D.C. Uh, we went to um, hang out. We went to our club to meet up with, with some of her friends. Majority of her friends were guys. So we're at this club, and it's probably about, I don't know, maybe I'm going to say three of us girls and six guys, okay? So there was one particular guy, and he just had the eye on me. I don't know why he had an eye for me that night, but he did. Um, my friend in D.C., you know, she told me, like, don't talk to him because he has a girlfriend. He's a player. Um, but he did tell me he's, like, attracted to you. He's digging you. And I was like, oh, okay, no problem. I'm not here to meet any men. I'm just here to have a good time. So he tried to dance with me the whole night. And I was just like, nah, I don't want to dance. I'm good because I heard he had the girlfriend. But eventually I gave in because we were, you know, dancing to reggae. And I danced with him. And I know, I don't know if some of y'all know what reggae is. But reggae, you know, when you, when you be whining and grinding and all that stuff, okay? Reggae, when you're dancing to reggae, you know, it can, it, it's a sexual dance. You know, it, it could get a little sexual. So, um, we danced and then eventually, you know, I was like, okay, cool it down. I'm all right. I'm good. Great. It was a nice dance. And I might have turned my back, I'm going to say, for maybe 60 seconds. I turned after I danced with the guy. He, I thought he went this way and I went that way. And I turned to my friend that lives in D.C. And I um, began to talk to her. And then she looked at me because she's taller than me. She's like six feet. And she was just like pointing like this, like, um, can you look behind you right now? And I looked behind me and we were like in a VIP. So VIP area usually has like couches, like, you know, um, sofas or whatever in the club for designated sections. And when I turned around, the guy that... I just finished dancing with who's been trying to get at me the whole night. Amanda is literally, the guy is sitting on the couch with his legs open, like kind of open. And Amanda is literally straddled on top of him like she's riding him in a sexual way. And she's grinding on him and motorboating him. Motorboating is when a woman takes her breast and she like puts it in the guy's face. And she's motorboating the guy that was trying to get with me the whole night and I just finished dancing with. So, the friend, you know, my friend that lives in, in D.C., she was like, that's weird. Even she picked up on it, okay? She said, that's weird, Angie. She was like, you know what, maybe we're bugging. Let's, let, let's try to give this girl a chance. She said, but... I find it very weird out of like all these six guys she chooses him and that's the guy that's been trying to get with you so we we I was like this is strange and keep in mind it also kind of gave me a bad reflection because I brung her there that was that was the first impression that my friend in DC would have of her and um the other guys, you got to understand, when you hang out with hoes, when you hang out with promiscuous women, you may not be promiscuous yourself or promiscuous men. This includes men too. Um, people would think that that's how you are. That's how you conduct yourself as well. It was fine that I danced with him, but for her to literally straddle him as if... Mm, she knew him as if she was having intercourse with him and motorboat him. That was just going a little bit too far, okay? But it, it's just really funny. After all that, after the club was over, we go outside. We're trying to figure out 
where we're going to eat afterwards, like a diner or something like that. And the guy still comes up to me and he's just like, listen, I still want you. Can I get your number? And I was like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm okay. Like he, he wasn't paying that girl any mind. And I know that infuriated her as well. You know, that was a narcissistic injury on that girl's part. And um, you're going to get this a lot with narcissistic women and narcissistic men if you're a guy hanging out with a, a dude who's a narc. They're going to compete with you when it comes to the opposite sex or whatever sex y'all are attracted to. They have to prove that whatever you can get, they can get and they can do it better. Okay? So, um, <clears throat> I, I kept that in the back of my head, but I, w I was never thinking anything off it, I just found it to be really really strange that when we got back to New York I didn't hear from her this girl never called me unless she needed her hair done which was fine because I was willing to make money okay so um we would hang out and do like lunch or dinner things like that it was never too extreme <sighs> this girl was like the poster child for narcissistic woman. Um, sometimes she would just call me randomly and say, hey, did you meet a guy yet? And I'll say, mm, sometimes I'll say, yeah, I did. Oh, what does he do for a living? How much money does he make? I wouldn't answer those questions. And Oh, let me see a photo of him. This entire time she was competing with me when it came to men. Okay, and this went on and on and on. But sadly, you know, we had a friend in common, the one that I met when she walked into the store that I was working at. She didn't compete with that girl, and that girl, you know, had a man, had a kid or whatever at the time. And you got to understand, it doesn't matter. If they see a light in you that they don't see in anyone else, they're going to compete with you. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter if you got a man already. They're still going to compete with you. Um, one thing I noticed about her whenever it was her birthday, she would pick the most expensive restaurant and she'll sit there and be ordering wine and cheese and this and that and appetizers and all this expensive stuff, expecting us, of course, you know, when you take someone out for dinner, for us to pay for it. When my birthday came up, suddenly she doesn't show up for my birthday dinners. This is the shit that the narcs do. Pay attention to people like that, okay? Oh, it didn't stop there, though. So, <clears throat> as time has gone through, you know, going by in this narc friendship, I meet a guy. And, um, this was a, this was a, this was a pretty, no. Nah. <laughs> this was a, this guy was good on paper, he really wasn't good on, you know, character-wise, I'll say. Um, but on paper, he looked good because he worked in corporate. He was educated. Um, he dressed nice. So it was his 30th birthday, and I, I was meeting up with Amanda for dinner that night. I was in Harlem. I said, oh, meet up with me for dinner, and then after dinner, I was going to hang out with the guy for his birthday. So it's a Friday night, and we go. I go to dinner, and whatever he was doing, he ended up um, finishing early. So he meets us at the restaurant. <laughs> I didn't know that he was going to come to the restaurant early, so he walks in the restaurant, and... I mean, her eyes lit up like a Christmas tree when she saw the guy that I was seeing walk in. It was just like, oh, she's like, that's him? I'm like, yeah, that's him. She's like, no, that's him walking towards us right now? And I'm like, yeah. Her whole demeanor went like sour, okay? I don't know what she expected what was going on in her mind, but this narcissist was, I mean, she was fed up, okay, she, she, she was pissed, okay, that that was a guy that I was seeing, and, um, it, it was so embarrassing for me, 
when we got into his car, because she ended up taking a cab to Harlem, when we got into his car, we were on our way to um, a club to meet up with his friends so we could celebrate his birthday that night. Um, you know, I'm sitting in the front seat. She's sitting in the back. I'm sitting in the front. Of course, he's driving. And, you know, it's really cutesy. Like, every light we get to, he'll hold my hand and he'll kiss me, you know, that type of thing. And in the middle, like, if he kissed me, she'll say, oh, can you stop? Like, seriously, can, can you two stop? And he's looking at me, and he's like, is she okay? Like, is she, is she all right? And he was being so sweet. He put his hand back there and, like, tapped her leg and said, it's all right. I got love for you, too. You okay back there? It's all right. And he's looking at, it was so embarrassing. This narcissist embarrassed me the whole night. We got into the club. He was nice. He brought us water. He brought us a drink. I mean, she was being a total bitch the entire time. There were other uh, male friends that we ended up meeting up with for you know to celebrate for his birthday. It was his friends, and I'm like, she could have danced with them. She could have focused on them, even if they weren't her type. They weren't. They weren't unattractive men. You know, there was a club full of men, but no, her focus was him and I. The entire night, she spewed out all her jealousy. Her narcissistic jealousy the entire night and it, it was so embarrassing um and he was such a gentleman that at the, at the end of the night he, he told her oh come you know because he would always you know hold my hand or hold my arm walk me to the car door open up the car door you know treat me like like a gentleman is opposed to and um that really pissed her off after he ended up driving us, you know, back into Queens. Um, it, you know, he had a talk with me. He was just like, yo, that's not your friend. And it was so embarrassing, guys. I was so embarrassed. Like, the narcissist will embarrass you. This girl competed with me the entire friendship. Um, anytime there was a guy who she thought wasn't up to par she'll say ill i can't believe you're seeing him ill that's your boyfriend ill that's the guy you're seeing and she never had anything better um i later found out that she was married and she left her husband to move to new york to be with her side dude and her side dude was married himself and he ended up not leaving the wife and um, her and the wife actually got into an altercation. So these people live such these double lives, and they put on this portrayal like they're so all they're all that, and it, no, they're not. Okay, so never ever let people who have money, education, they're part of the church, or where don't ever think that don't ever put it past people like this because they will compete with you. When you have people like this competing with you, they're not mentally right, okay? They, they, that's not your friend. Your friend will congratulate you. Your friend will be happy for you when you finally get a man or you finally get a woman. You're getting married. You're having a baby. And I understand jealousy sometimes can be a natural emotion for some people, um, but they're not going to sit there and hurt you. They may, a healthy person, if they are feeling jealous, they're going to take a step back. They're going to take a step back because they don't want to hurt you. But narcissists will hurt you, all right? And she actually came out and said it like, I don't understand how, how did you meet a guy like that? Because I don't have a college education. How did you meet a guy like that? And I have the degree. She actually came out and said it. Okay, and, and it's sad because I have I, I do have friends who are still friends with this particular narcissist. They don't see the truth about her, and I'm not there to um, try to convince them of her. Maybe one day they will see that she is nothing but a fake narcissist. But I'm not here to convince anybody. Um. I can keep going on and on and on about this girl, but I don't want to give her too much energy in the universe. But pay attention to people who are competing with you. The narcissist is always competing with you. I, um, 
there was a narcissistic guy that when I dropped my poetry book, matter of fact, I'm about to do my promo for that. <clears throat> Hold on a minute. <laughs> this is my poetry book. It's on Amazon. Cool woman. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. So, it's only 22 pages of poems. I've been writing poetry since 1999. And um, it's $10. It's on Amazon. Cool woman. And the, my author name is Angelic Renee. Um, it's basically poems um, starting back from 1999 to recent about different experiences, whether it's sex, whether it's, it's molestation and and um, overcoming, you know, forgiveness of my father. And it is uh, it's poems that describe my journey to womanhood, going from being a girl to actually becoming a woman. And, um, yeah, if you don't want to send me a donation, you can always go onto Amazon and purchase my poetry book, and I really will appreciate it. If you buy my poetry book, make sure you drop it in the comments and let me know that you did buy my poetry book. Um, but, yeah, when I wrote this poetry book in 2016, this narcissistic guy out of nowhere says, I'm, I'm, join, I'm going to join a poetry competition and I'm never thinking that he's competing with me but now that I know that he is a narcissist he did it because he wanted to prove that he was better than me or you know just as good as me and and you'll get that I had another narcissist that I always told her I wanted a boutique and um I don't have a boutique yet but I do sell clothing on Poshmark.com it's an app, and um, I always told her, you know, I want to do a a, um, a boutique, and one day she comes to New York, this was the friend that was in D.C., she ended up being a narcissist herself, and she comes to New York, and she meet up, meets up with me for dinner, I'm think, thinking she's going to tell me something really, like, grand, and she tells me, you know, like, we go to dinner, and she's like, oh, guess what? I'm like, what? She's like, I have a boutique now. And I'm like, huh? And it, it, and you know what? It wasn't a jealousy thing. It was kind of like, where did that come from? Like, I was friends with this girl since we were like 13. I have never heard of her talking about wanting a boutique. I went to school. My major was fashion design. I went to beauty school. I was always about fashion and hair and all this stuff. It was just really weird that she said that she wanted a boutique, and this is what the narcissist does, and it's just to compete with you, um, basically. But you know what? I When I looked, <laughs> she had an online boutique. When I went online to look at her boutique, it wasn't her personality. She basically just paid someone to create a boutique for her. She didn't even pick the clothing. She didn't even pick her name. She went on to a online generator. <laughs> I tell you, narcissists are a trip. It had, I mean, she's a black woman. She's, well, she's Afro-Latina. And um, her, all the women on her um, boutique were white. And there's something wrong with being a black person using white models but it, it, it just didn't make sense. She just did it to do it. And this is what they'll do. Because she she worked for a well-known um, phone company, a cable company. She was in corporate, a manager. So it was just like so weird. Where did this come from? It came from me. And this is what they'll do. They'll compete uh, with you. It, so be careful of the words and information that you tell these narcs or just your friends in general. Um, my ex narc bestie, um, one day somebody commented to me on Facebook. This is towards the end of our friendship. Someone commented to me on Facebook about, um, someone said, oh, I think you missed your calling. Your calling was to be a psychologist. And I just laughed it off, you know, whatever. And, um, a week later, he enrolls into college at 25 years old, and his major was going to be psychology. So, um, 
this is what the narcissist will do. They are competing with you, especially if they have more resources than you. Um, they will use those resources to try to go over you. But here's the thing. A lot of the times, their plan, what they are competing with you, if they don't have passion for it, so it doesn't go anywhere. But when you do it, it will have passion. So don't let the narc stop you from your dream just because they go and do it. It doesn't matter if it's what's going to make you look like. Keep doing it. If art was always your desire, continue with your art. You know, it doesn't matter what it could be, um, accounting. If accounting was always your desire, keep up with it, no matter what it is. Even though the narcissist is going to make it look like you copied them. Screw that. Continue it because the chances are they're going to fail at it because it's not it's not naturally um, God-given. Their talent, their ideas, they got it from you, all right? So be careful and watch out for people who are competing with you. How competition is great but when somebody is literally trying to become you and take your ideas that's not a friend that's not a real family member that's not real that's not even a real lover all right I'm gonna continue to do more videos um, please donate to me um, no donation is too small or too large my um, PayPal information will be in the description box peace and blessings and I'll talk to you soon have an awesome awesome week